I still don't regard myself as actually being a scientist. I just was, really, I just I just like doing it. Hi, my name is Karina McCosco from AcademicInfluence.com, and I'm here with Professor Curl. And I just want to know. Thinking way back to when you first got into uh, the science field or got into chemistry, what kind of influenced you to go into the field you went into? Well, it wasn't actually, it was curiosity, but not science. Mm. Because I, I can't remember exactly one Christmas, I think it was when I was nine years old, I got a chemistry set for Christmas. And in those days, the lawyers had not gotten involved in things so much so this chemistry set actually had chemicals in it um <laughs> so i you know i started playing with it and i you know it's this normal thing you have it, there's a little uh, sort of brochure that comes with the set and it suggests various experiments you can do you know you can you can make pour things together and have them change color you can can um uh, uh, have create colorful fires and interesting smoke, colored smoke, and all things like that. And so uh, I just enjoyed it. And after I had tried mixing up together everything that came with the set, uh, then I had to think about how what's the way that I can get more chemicals. And I particularly liked uh, Things that, things that combusted spontaneously, things that made explosions, things that smell bad. Uh, and so, but not, there was no science in it. This was not science, but it was, it, was, it was something that I continued to pursue. Fortunately, I was, I was not a good enough chemist to, to blow myself up. So I managed to survive. And so I was still very interested in chemistry. And at, or when I went to high school, uh, the, this is Thomas Jefferson in San Antonio. There's another guy from San Antonio, Thomas Jefferson. Anyway, um, they um, we took chemistry in the in the year the junior year before, right, you know. So I was in eleventh grade at that time, and the, the chemistry teacher liked me, I was, she could tell I was very interested in chemistry. And so she encouraged me. And they, um, actually the next year when I was a senior, we did experiments together. Um, and and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. So that sort of set me on the path of chemistry. I still don't regard myself as actually being a scientist. I just was, really? I just I just like doing it. I like the work, <laughs> and so then I went off as an undergraduate and sort of never looked back. I mean, you know, always always uh, stayed being a chemist. Uh, you know, you always whatever you whenever you're in about uh, somewhere in your sophomore or junior year in in college. A lot of people have this thing of, you know, should I, I'm on this course, is that the right course? Should I be doing something else? So I thought a little bit about being a physics major, and I like physics, but I thought I wasn't good enough in mathematics to do physics properly. So then I thought about being a chemical engineer. I thought about it a little bit, uh, but finally decided, no, I wasn't really interested in being a chemical engineer. So I just stuck with chemistry all the way through. So anyway, it was, it, uh, it, I've, been, I've liked it. It's been a good, it's been a good life. So. Yeah. Well, why is it that you don't consider yourself a scientist? Oh, I, I consider, I, I, I finally got to be a scientist well, I think I really became a scientist uh, sometime. Hmm, that's a good question. We, we didn't have, there was never any, when I came along, there was not any, so there were no science fairs for, for, 
uh, high school, there were no no uh, undergraduate research uh, at that time. So I think the only time you become a scientist is when you start re- start research. <laughs> In other words, you can lo- you can learn a lot of science. You can have a lot of knowledge at your disposal. And by the time I was graduated from Rice, I had a lot of knowledge at my disposal. But it's only when you realize that you have to come up with ideas for research, you have to think think, think through on your own research problems for things that nobody had done yet that you become a scientist. Uh, so that was, I would say, graduate school, and that's the time when I really decided I was a scientist. Wow, fascinating. And I'm sure there are so many things that you can do within the realm of chemistry. So could you just kind of like briefly explain to us what you did over your career and maybe in terms that somebody like me who's not a chemist uh, can understand? <laughs> well, the, um, there's, a, there's a famous saying by uh, the famous New Zealand chemist, uh, guy who discovered the nature of the atom after he won a Nobel Prize. Uh, this is uh, one, of my, one of the problems of getting old is that the names they don't come right easily to you. Uh, That's okay. Uh, so uh, anyway, his, he said that 98% or of, sci- of, of, of scientific publications were like like uh, stamp collecting. Uh, and I think he could afford this Rutherford, Rutherford Ernest Rutherford. Mm. He could say that uh, because he obviously didn't go in, he didn't do stamp collecting. And, you know, <laughs> his, his most exciting work was done after he won a Nobel Prize. Uh, so, uh, anyway, the. Um, uh, that's kind of true. Uh, it's, it's it's really hard to to come up with ideas that are so great that that uh, people will fall in line. You know, uh, you, you make you make some sort of big leap forward. And so most of my career was, you know, and looking back on it, was sort of pedestrian. I was I uh, my main. My main emphasis on what I done did, did was uh, molecular spectroscopy. So the, um, which is a subject which is can be intensely interesting, uh, but only to other molecular spectroscopists. Uh, it's very useful sometimes in a practical sense, but but uh, not uh, not necessarily. You know, but for example. The, the, the discovery of the maser, which led to the laser, was somebody, or Towns, Troy Towns, was interested in in some phenomenon uh, that involved uh, was molecular spectroscopy of ammonia, of ammonia molecules. Um, so it can, you know, there can be this huge opening that comes about from something that started out to be what looks like relatively. Uh, Pure work, pure pure curiosity kind of work. So anyway, so I did I did a lot of microspectroscopy, enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I, some of some of my papers are are really going to be lasting. Actually, the, the nice the, one of the main reasons I like science is because once you discover something new or find out something new, knowledge. Nobody else can re- replace it. It's irreplaceable. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else can rediscover it. Well, if you're an engineer, then if you make something, somebody will come along and make something better. Right. So, you know, like, like the, the guy who invented Polaroid cameras is completely put out of business by digital cameras uh, and, 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 and so on. There are many, many examples of that. So that's why... That's why I like science is that when you do something, it's done, by golly. (laughs) 
Yeah, you can never be put out of business as a chemist, right? <laughs> well, you can never, you can never, your work is going to be lasting. Anything you discover cannot be re rediscovered or maybe rediscovered, but then people find out, oh, well, you know, this guy discovered this back 20 years ago. So it's sort of a, science is a wonderful thing because yeah. it it's, you know, so uh, interactive. You interact with, with people. They're nearby. You interact with people all over the country. You interact with people all over the world, finding out what their ideas are and, and trying to, to use their discoveries to make new discoveries. Wow, so. that is incredible. <laughs> well, looking back at what you've done, all of the things that can't be rediscovered, um, what advice would you have for somebody my age who uh, is just starting out, just trying to figure out what they want to do? What advice would you have for them going forward? Well, I have a, a grandson Really? Who is, uh, it, he's, he's doing his junior year, he's in the middle of his junior year, and he's asking me these questions. <laughs> and I'm always trying to t tell him, well, you know, it's, it's your life. You, you have to decide. I'm not going to be responsible for, for you, you going off on some track and then discovering <laughs> that you hate it. And why did my friend Adel tell me to do that? So you have, you know, you have this experience of feeling like you're, you're, when you begin to think about careers and a commitment to a career, of how do you, how do you decide if I take this path, then it'll be hard to get over on that path uh, after, you know, after a few years. So, for example, my grandson loves history, mm -hmm. but he also likes money. <laughs> and it's it's it, it's it's hard to make a lot of money in in, in history unless you're extremely talented um, and and able to write best-selling history books. So the um, he's you know he's torn. Should I go business? Should I go history? Should I go history? Should I go maybe I should go to law school? Um, so it's it's that's that's. You know, you you just find what you find is that you you have to you reach the point where you have to weigh your options and which what option am I going to take? Do this, do that. Now I didn't have that much problem because I had such a long term commitment to chemistry. Right. You know, it was not like when I thought about as, as maybe I should major do you know shift to physics. It wasn't really a very strong pull, and or same with these switching to chemical engineering. And you know, the thing is that I don't know. Certainly for me, um, have, having started to do research, it's addictive. <laughs> <laughs> so I became addicted to it, uh, and, and never, never even thought about doing anything different. <laughs> Wow. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. It was really so cool hearing everything that uh, led up to your career, this amazing career that you've had. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk well, with me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Nice to meet you, Karine.